Bill, Syl, thanks for joining me once again for Glorious Goodwood. And on the agenda is the Wednesday of Glorious Goodwood, the feature of the week for me, and almost the best race of the season so far, is the Sussex Stakes. What a race we've got here. Look at over the years, horses like Canvey Cliffs, a great Frankel won it twice. Rip Van Winkle was a personal favourite of mine, Toronado. And this year, it doesn't disappoint. I'll read you the betting down the card and we'll get straight into it. We bet seven to four Sishkin, five to two Mahatha, three Chemico, six Sirius Maximus. Look at that, six to one, fourth in the winner of the Queen Anne. That gives you an idea of the sheer quality of the race. Siskin, five from five, won the Irish Guineas. Mahatha, we won't talk about the Queen Anne, but um, the recovery mission was completed in the summer mile. Chemico won the Guineas. Probably didn't quite stay in a weirdly run derby, but I'll go first. I'm a Mahatha fan. That's who I've backed. That's who I will hope will win the race and who I expect to win the race. Still, not got a ride. All four of the leading jockeys quickly get stuck in traffic on the way there. Which one of the four are you going to pick? I think I'll go for Sisk. He, he was very tough in Ireland when he won the Guinness. He made his way out and he looked to me his uh, quality of in the field or that, you know, he's a young horse and He's a coming up horse, improving horse, you know, through his first day, you know. But I think everyone has to to beat Sisk. You know, I think he's the he's the class one. Yeah, I mean that Mahatha, as much as it was impressive last year, it was a group two. This is as hot a group one as you're gonna get. Bill, is it as good a race as it looks? Am I overhyping it? Am I going all Matt Chapman on you? That's good. I mean, if you've got the, the winners of the English and Irish Guineas, you all, all, all the best three-year-olds turning up to take on the older horses. Um, I mean, on paper, paper, it's as good as you can get, really. I yeah. mean, there aren't that many missing. Um, you know, if you, if you could throw Pinatubu in there and Palace Pier in there, you've got the whole full house of top three-year-olds. But it's a really good race. Um, Siskin won a muddling Irish Guineas, probably... Um, if Balladour could replay that race, they would have done things a bit differently. They kind of set it up for him for for his acceleration. Um, whether he'll be able to show his acceleration in a fast run race like this on rain softened ground, I don't know. He, he he could be. I mean, he was a warm favourite when the betting opened. Mahatha just keeps closing in on him, and every, everyone is kind of warm to Mahatha. I, I I like him a lot. He put the race to bed, it should have won a Queen Anne probably, and put the race to bed quite easily at, at Ascot last time. Um, it's it's a cracking race. I'm just a bit disappointed there's only the seven runners. I would have liked to have had a chance. Yeah. You, you and everyone else apart from us bookmakers. It's, it's handy that seven runners, I tell you. Yeah, I was, I, I'm convinced. Did you I'm, not just look at the six to one Sirius Maximus and think if you had a hundred to one rag in there, what an each way bet that would yeah, be? He's, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a tough tough horse you know yeah. he's, he's beaten a neck in this race last year he doesn't stop he, he, he loves a scrap um you keep thinking he's not quite top class and then when he when you look at it down his list of group one victories you suddenly realize he he, he is um yeah. he's 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 rock solid I, i'm convinced we haven't seen the best of vatican city yet um i think he he would have learned a lot from from epson which didn't go right he's definitely a miler that run behind siskin was stunning for a horse only having his third start I think he'll run well, but if you, if I had to nail my colours to one, I, I would go for Mahatha, because I think he is fine when it comes to the ground. Ground is going to play a part in this. You know, there is a bit of rain around. I know things are supposed to dry out a little bit, but we're still probably going to be around the good soft territory. I'd go for Mahatha, but this this is a great watching race anyway. Cool. Uh, I'm with Mahatha as well. Uh, right, let's just quickly touch on the Malcolm because that is the, the supporting act on the Wednesday. Five furlongs, blink, blink and you miss it. One of my most enjoyable memories on Goodwood ever was the Malcolm a couple of years ago watching Rumble in the Jungle. Um, a wide open affair in the Malcolm this year. They pretty much bet for the field. Heading up the market is significantly for Carl Burke, who's come second on all three of his starts. So the near sunset, four to one. As much as the Sussex looks a vintage Sussex, I thought the Malcolm didn't look great. Harsh. <laughs> Harsh? Well, my view on that, I'll, I'll go first. Is go that on. Whenever you think a race... Tell me off. 
Now, whenever you think a race isn't great, there's sometimes a superstar can be born out of it. It just often happens that way. Yeah. There's no obvious ones in here. Significantly has done nothing wrong. Um, but in my view, he's also done nothing right because he's thrown, you know, he's kind of away. grabbed defeat out of the jaws of victory on a number of occasions. Came there cantering at Sandown last time. I couldn't back him myself. He's, he needs to be forgiven too much. A strong run race like this will help him though because he might be led down to late on in the race. Um, wide open race, Chief Little Hawk, Aidan O'Brien's admitted he's made a Horlicks of some of his juveniles, rushing them to get them ready for Ascot. Impressive on his debut. Probably Ascot came too soon and then has had been pushed out wide in a couple of races. But O'Brien every year tends to have a few um, two-year-olds who become expensive to follow. More beautiful backers on the weekend in the Princess Margaret are probably still licking their wounds. Uh, this horse looks a little bit in that camp to me. There's one horse here that really interests me, and it's a horse called Steel Bull, uh, trained by Michael O'Callaghan, who won last week in Ireland. Won a maiden where they came for the Joseph O'Brien horse, just on the off, heavily. And it beat all that horse of Joseph O'Brien. It's called Dent Star, but it went past it like an old season pro on its first ever start. And that, that was super impressive for me. He knew his job. The fact they've thrown him straight in the deep end here into a group three, uh, a horse that looks all about patience and speed and has that turn of foot. He's drawn where I would want him to be drawn and Colin Keane, great jockey booking. I just thought he'd run really well, street ball, maybe six, seven to one, he'd do for me. And in a race I didn't think much of, you've convinced me then, Steel Bull will be my selection of the Morecambe. Um, right, let's roll on to the rest of the card. Um, we'll get straight into your rise in a second, Sil, but Bill, I know that you fancy one in the first race on the card, you fancy one in the 110, don't you? Yeah, well, it was just, it was just the, the Roger Varian horse, uh, Waliak. Um, she ran really well at, at Ascot. I mean, she's, she's no great secret now. They came for her heavily at Ascot. She was one of the best back horses of the week. And she just bumped into Onassis. I think she, whether, whether you know, Onassis has been out one in France since. That form looks very, very strong. Waliak was bound to improve from the, uh, the run. I just... Might be a bit short. I don't know how they bet in this race, but that... Yeah, should... no prices at the moment. Just waiting for them to come up. But you thought she'd be up near the top of the market, wouldn't you? It's a filly. I think she'll be quite short, but I think she'll yeah. win. She, she's a filly with an enormous amount of talent. And when you look at the weights and you look at the ones up the top, I know, I, I know they're older fillies and she's a three-year-old, but she's got just eight stone four at the bottom. And the one at the top's got ten stone. I know which one I'd rather be with. Indeed, indeed. Right. The 145, another race where I'm going to wish still all the very best and to come second because my favourite horse of all time runs in the race. But still, the 145, you team up with Mark Johnson, two and a half miles. That's his thing around there. Those staying handicaps is no one better at Goodwood. Uh, tell us about Rochester's house. He ran fifth, ran with great credit, I thought, at, at Royal Ascot in the uh, Ascot Stakes by Kern Leon. Consistent type. He'd have every chance here, wouldn't he? Yeah, I'd say so, like, you know, and he, he has a good chance, and but, you know, he, he's tough, you know, going around there and then over that trip, but uh, I wouldn't tip him out the box, and he's a horse, I think I tip him about two eyes, and I'm going to tip him again, he's a summer move. Joe move. I've been waiting for you to tell me, sir. Yeah. You, have, you got, have you got a small share in it, Sylvia? You're you looking to just try and sell him for a few quid? <laughs> no, he's just he's just been consistent, like and you know, and sometimes things hasn't gone his way, but when things go his way, he's a really tough to beat, you know. And uh, I like yeah, I'm gl I'm glad I got the ride of the race, and I carry eight twelve, and uh, you know, but my horse has a bit to prove, but he stays well. So with a bit of luck, I think we're going to be competitive. It's a fun race, this, but I like going through these big staying handicaps. Uh, have you got one for me? Yeah, I, I, I think Sil's Sil got a big chance here on Rochester House. Yeah, I do too. Joe Fanning probably did too much with Rochester House last time at Sandown where he saw the lead. He, he, he was up front fighting for the finish a long way out. And, and when when um, he was ridden with more restraint by Silva over this trip at Ascot, he kind of crept into the race because he had to from a bad draw. And that's probably the way to ride this horse, just bring him into the race slowly and and, and not not throw him into it too, too early. Um, Wide open race, two I like here. Fun enough, I, it's last year's finish, the second and third from last year. True Destiny, Roger Charlton's horse, that's a bit more streetwise at the age of five. Um, they didn't nurse yeah. the 
race last year, and I think he'd probably ridden, ridden a bit more positively than he was then. He's in good form. He's up a few pounds higher, but I think he'll run well. And the other one at a big price was the horse that was just touched off in this last year, Sensational, down the bottom for William Knight. Was a local trainer. He's now training in Newmarket. I was going to say he was local, wasn't he, William Knight, yeah. as well? Well, he's, um, he's crept back down to the mark. He was beaten a neck in this race last year. So we know the trip and track all suits. Yeah. Back down to a mark of 81. You can guarantee this has been the plan all season to come back and have another crack at this race off the same mark. And I just thought at a double-figure price, he'd run well down the foot of the weights. Well, that's the big staring handicap, the 145. Sylvia, so other ride on the day comes in the last race. Um, uh, in the 420, seven furlongs, you ride battered uh, for Rafe Beckett, who I couldn't believe was a six-year-old when I looked earlier. His seasonal reappearance. I'm going to lean on you to tell me a bit about him. I, it wouldn't be a horse I know a lot about over the years, I wouldn't have thought. Rated 92, hasn't won since August 2017. Could say he's due a win. Well, yeah, we like to say he, he, you know, he lost his way a bit, but he, he has been very high rate in the past, and you know, is the, the problem is he hasn't got a proper race to come to this big, big handicap. You know, that could be the big issue. Plus, the draw doesn't help much. But uh, his other horse I like out there is is Aragato. Is Mr. Jarvis' horse? I think good gait yeah. and he tra usually travel nicely strong and I think it would be plenty of pace. He could just sit behind the box see, and he could deliver, you know. So it's a it's a competitive handicap. If I had a better draw, I'll throw myself in the mix. But and of course I'm gonna do my best of that to win. Yeah. But uh, you know, feel stuff from that draw, you know. Bill, anything yeah. in the last desperately difficult I thought when I looked at this yeah. briefly. Yeah. Horrible race. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's wide open. I mean, Battered is is on a bit of a comeback trail. He's now with Rafe, but when he was, if you go back to his best form when he was tra trained by the Haggis team, he's he, he's got talent. But this will be difficult first time up. Um, I agree with Sylph. Actually, I think um, I think Aragato run really Aragato. well. Fourth, fourth fourth in the Bunbury Cup. William yeah. Jarvis' sources are in great form, and he's. He just seems to be getting better. He's just he, he, he's he's getting better. He's he's off the same mark that he was wasn't beaten far in the uh, in, in what was a messy messy Bunbury Cup. I just think he'll run well from a good draw. Great. Well, thanks, guys. That's the Wednesday to recap. Sylv, you're going to pick up a spare on Shishkin late in the Silver Stakes and get beat by Mahatha that me and Bill have both put up. Um, <laughs> Bill still bulls your interesting selection in the Malcolm. Still sticking with Summer Moon and Aragato. I love your um, loyalty and I will try and back anything that I think will win. Uh, guys, it was great fun and I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And Sylv, best of luck with all your rides. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.